Hello everyone! Uh, this game is from the same tournament as the game in my previous video. Uh, it was played in Sukumi in 1972 and uh, uh, Alexander Belyavsky has the white pieces against Mikhail Tal. And uh, like I said in my previous video, Tal won this tournament and it was because of Belyavsky that uh, Tal had a sole, a sole lead uh, in the end uh, because uh, Belyavsky defeated Mark Taimanov and uh, in the end Taimanov got third place. Uh, but this game is a real challenge for, for the young rising star as he faces the magician from Riga uh, and he has the white pieces. So let's see this game. It's, uh, this is a, quite an interesting tournament so I might do even more games from this tournament. Uh, Belyavsky plays e4 and c5, the Sicilian uh, from the magician. Knight to f3, d6, d4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4 and knight to f6. Uh, we have knight to c3 and e6 is played, the Shev Sheveningen variation. Uh, and uh, we have g4, uh, the Keras attack. Uh, a6, uh, g5, knight to d7, bishop to e3 and b5 by Tal. We have f4, uh, bishop to b7 and uh, already uh, going for the very sharp pawn to f5. And well, probably uh, the best move is, uh, is definitely not the one Tal played. Uh, but Tal doesn't scare easily and he goes for b4. He immediately counterattacks on the queen side. Uh, f captures on e6 and Tal plays b captures on c3, grabbing the knight. And here white has a few options. He can either grab this knight on d7 with check or he can grab the pawn and go for the attack. And grabbing the knight on d7 doesn't really give white that much. Uh, so Belyavsky plays the, the correct move. He plays uh, e captures on f7 with check. Uh, we have king captures on f7 and uh, well already this is a critical position uh, white is down a piece and uh, well every move counts and uh, Belyavsky plays bishop to c4 with check going for the direct threat uh, much better here was bishop to h3 and only then castling uh, so in this position a, a silent move would be would be much better than the direct the direct bishop to c4 that he went for uh, but okay bishop to c4 King to e8 by Tal and uh, Belyavsky castles here. Uh, knight to e6, it does seem like an aggressive move, and uh, but it doesn't really achieve anything. After queen to c8, uh, Tal would be attacking the bishop on c4. Uh, this uh, c captures on b2 is still a threat, so black, black would be perfectly fine here, even better. So after king e8, Belyavsky castled, uh, threatening ideas like bishop to f7 check. And uh, Tal goes for knight to e5, uh, the best move in the position, attacking the bishop on c4, also defending f7 now with this knight on e5, and uh, Belyavsky goes for uh, queen to e2. Uh, defending the bishop, we have knight b to c6, Tal develops a piece, and rook to f5 by Belyavsky. Uh, defending this g5 pawn, because if Tal captures uh, this knight on d4 and bishop captures, this pawn would be undefended. Uh, Tal goes for queen to e7, and we have bishop to d5. And, uh, well, here Tal goes for a series of exchanges that uh, really, uh, really turns the game around in Tal's favor. He plays knight captures on d4, bishop captures on d4, uh, bishop captures on d5, we have e captures on d5. Uh, Tal is up a piece, so every exchange is definitely in his favor. And uh, here, uh, a brilliant finisher by Tal, he plays knight to c6. Uh, offering to exchange queens, uh, the white queen is un undefended on e2, so uh, Belyavsky can't really capture the knight on c6. And uh, Belyavsky goes for queen to f2. Uh, his idea is, well, I'm still attacking Tal's knight here. And, uh, well, rook to e1 uh, is definitely a threat, you know, winning the queen, this queen on e7. Uh, but Tal simply plays knight captures on d4. And this is the problem. Uh, the knight is attacking this knight, on, uh, this rook on f5. And the problem is that rook to e1 doesn't really achieve anything for white. If rook to e1, Tal simply plays c captures on b2. Uh, and if you capture the queen, rook captures on e7, bishop captures on e7. Uh, well, Tal is threatening a pawn to b1, queening. Uh, so queen to e1, for example, defending, now rook to b8. And, uh, well, uh, you don't really have a lot of options here for white. If rook to f1 then simply uh, knight to f3 check, forking the king and queen, and after the rook captures you queen, uh, queen captures, rook captures, and Tal is up uh, a whole rook and the bishop. And uh, after this rook to b8, if you don't play rook to f1, if you try to block this pawn with your queen, for example, queen to b1, uh, well, 
Tal simply grabs a rook and, uh, well, you do have a queen, but your queen is stuck <laughs> stuck here on b1. And Tal has uh, two rooks, uh, a bishop and a knight for the queen. So this uh, this doesn't really achieve anything. So after knight to d4, uh, Belyavsky realizes that rook to e1 was never really a threat. And he plays queen captures on d4. And now uh, Tal would probably... Tal could, uh, can probably capture this pawn on b2. This is the best move. Uh, but he doesn't need it. He's up a piece and he goes for the immediate queen to a7, exchanging queens. And uh, being up a piece, so this is perfectly fine for Tal. This is winning. Uh, Belyavsky plays b captures on c3. Queen captures on d4 with check. C captures on d4. And bishop to e7. And, uh, well, <clears throat> with uh, Tal being up a piece, this is... Uh, this is a uh, game over. A couple of more moves were played. Rook to f3, uh, rook to c8 by Tal attacking the pawn, uh, rook to b1, uh, bishop to g5, rook to b7, and uh, rook to f8 by Tal. And after rook to g3, uh, Belyavsky actually resigned the game without even uh, waiting for a response from Tal. Uh, because after a move like uh, bishop to f6, you don't really have anything to play for with white here. Uh, this rook would come into game with rook to f7, uh, white can't really afford to exchange any pieces, and uh, Belyavsky doesn't want to uh, continue this game anymore. So after rook to g3, Belyavsky resigned the game, and, uh, well, uh, Tal continued on his undefeated streak. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a great game, and it was a good try by Belyavsky, although it would be a lot better if after Tal's uh, king to f7, he didn't go for the immediate bishop to c4 check, uh, rather uh, bishop to h3. And it would be interesting if uh, this same position was played, but if Tal had the white pieces and Belyavsky had the black pieces, uh, I'm sure Tal would continue with bishop to h3, and who knows how this game would end up. Uh, so yeah, that's the game, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, David Krepin for your contribution to my channel, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. And uh, thank you all for watching. I will see you soon.